Okay, in this video we're going to be solving rational equations, equations with fractions in them. We'll first look at understanding the method we use, and we'll do example 1, uh, this is 2, example 3, 4, and this example 5. So if you want to go to a particular example, you have the index on the left of the screen here. And um, we'll just start with understanding the method. Okay. So let's just have a look at some of these examples. If x over 5 was equal to 3 over 5, what do you think x is? Write down the answer. Press pause if you need to and write down the answer. x divided by 5 equals 3 divided by 5. This quantity is the same as this quantity. The only way this thing is going to be equal to this thing if it's a, it is if x is equal to 3, right? Because 3 over 5 is the same thing as 3 over 5, okay? So x has to be 3. What about this one? If you had x over abc is equal to negative 2 over abc, what would x have to be? Okay, so what, what we're saying is if this fraction is equal to this fraction, then the only, the only way they can be the same is if x is negative 2, right? Because then you would have, you know, negative 2 over abc equals negative 2 over abc. Okay, so the point is if two fractions are equal and their bottoms are the same, then their tops also have to be the same, right? And the thing is, if you had this example, if 3x over x minus 4 equals 7 over x minus 4, then what's 3x? What do you think? Write it down. Now just think about this. Look, the bottoms are the same. Both of these fractions are the same. Their bottoms are the same. Their denominators are the same, right? Um, now if their denominators are the same and the fractions have the same value, then surely the tops also have to be the same, right? Surely 3x has to be the same thing as the same quantity as 7 because we're told that both of these fractions are the same. Does that make sense? Okay, it's the, it's the same. What you're actually doing is, I mean, if you look on this one, you know, you're actually multiplying on this one, you're multiplying by 5 over 1 and the 5's cross cancel and we get 3 here. Here we're multiplying by 5 over 1 and the 5's cross cancel and we get x here, right? Similarly here we're multiplying by x minus 4 over 1 on both sides. And these x minus 4's cross cancel, okay? And we end up with 3x equals 7. But if we just use this logic that if the bottoms of the fractions are the same, then the tops also have to be equal, then we can actually skip this messy step of multiplying both sides by the same thing. Okay, and you'll see why soon. So we have 3x equals 7. Now to find x, all we need to do is divide by 3, you see, and then we have, of course, that x is 7 thirds, right? Now, if you had this example, x plus 2 equals 70, x plus 2 over x minus 1 times x plus 3 equals 70 over x minus 1 times x plus 3, then what, how can you solve this equation? Well, we could write in the messy step of multiplying both this by x plus 3 over 1 and then also multiplying by, you know, x minus 1 over 1, say, and then these guys cross cancel here and here and here and here. And we also multiply this side by the same thing, of course, x minus 1 times x plus 3 over 1. And, you know, these guys cross cancel, okay? That's one way of doing it, but it's very messy and there's a lot to write out. If we can just see the logic that we're being told that this fraction is equal to this fraction. And we're told, we, we can see clearly that their denominators are the same, okay? If their denominators are the same, and the fractions are the same quantity, well, surely the tops have to be the same as well. So we can surely write down, well, x plus 2 has to be equal to 70. And then you just keep going. So if we can get this logic down, it'll really help us out. So subtracting 2 from both sides, we can get the value of x, 68, right? So going to example 1, let's see if we can use our logic. Our first step for all of these, um, so, so, oh, sorry, before we go. So, so the, the point is, the point is, sorry, if two fractions are equal and their bottoms are the same, we can set the tops equal. So we had these two fractions are equal, okay? and their bottoms are the same, then we can set the tops equal. x plus 2 equals 70, right? So we're left with two steps to solve rational equations. Solving rational equations, we need to 
we need to understand this, and then we need to just make the bottoms the same and set the tops equal and solve. Okay, so we're solving rational equations, make the bottoms the same, set the tops equal, and then just solve it. So now we'll go to example one, okay, and um, we do these two steps. If we make the bottoms the same, we can then set the tops equal and solve the equation. So right now we have um, two fractions and kind of, you know, a, a integer. Well, we're going to write everything as a fraction. So write 44 is 44 over 1. Now make all the bottoms the same. Now the easiest way to make all the bottoms the same is just to work on these guys first, okay? And we've just covered adding fractions, so it shouldn't be a problem. Make, add these, so make the bottoms the same just as if you're going to add them, right? You could multiply this by a 5, and you could multiply this guy by 6, right? So now both bottoms are the same, 5 times 6, 5 times 6. But you must multiply this by 5 over 5, and this one by 6 over 6. So that's the first step, okay? Now these fractions have the same bottoms. This fraction does not have the same bottom, okay? So give him the same bottom, multiply his bottom by 5, and then by 6, Okay, now now his denominator is the same as these denominators, right? But he also must multiply the top by 5 and also by 6, okay? So what we get is, and the next step is, okay, x times 5 is 5x plus 6 times x is 6x all over 6 times 5 or 5 times x all over, you know, 5 times 6 equals, um, you know, 44 times 5 times 6 all over, you know, 5 times 6, okay? So what we get is two fractions equal to each other, okay, and the bottoms are the same. Both bottoms say 5 times 6. Are we clear on that? Does that make sense? Now, the thing is, if this fraction equals this fraction, and their denominators are the same, then surely the numerators have to be the same. I mean, if both fractions are, are equal, the bottoms are the same, then surely the tops have to be the same, right? So your next step is just to write, okay, 5x plus 6x equals the top 44 times 5 times 6, whatever that is. And let's plug that in the calculator. 5 times 6 is 30, so it's 44, you know, times 30. 1, 3, 2, 0. Oh. Okay, so we're just setting the tops equal. Now, just note that we didn't have to write this step in. We could have just said, okay, all the bottoms are the same. And on the left-hand side, we're just adding these fractions, so they would have the same denominator. So we could have just went, you know, 5x plus 6x equals whatever this is, 1, 3, 2, 0. So at, at a certain point in the notes, I'm going to just start skipping this middle step and writing out this. And I think you guys would probably prefer that too because it's less writing and it's quicker. In any case, you have add like terms. You have 11x equals 1, 3, 2, 0. You divide both sides by 11. And x equals, plug that in the calculator, whoops, uh, 1, 3, 2, oh, divided by 11, 120, right? x equals 120, okay? Now, of course, we need to check our answer. The original equation was x over 6, okay? x over 6 plus x over 5 equals 44. It was x over 6 plus x over 5 equals 44. So we're going to plug in 120 into both and see what happens. So 120 over 6 is going to give me, um, uh, let's see, is that uh, 20, I think? And 120 over 5 gives me 24. 20 and 24, that does indeed equal 44. So we get 44 equals 44. Both sides are equal. Right, draw a smiley face. You've checked your answer. X is definitely equal to 120. 120 solves the equation. And we have one solution, okay? So example two, um, what we have another rational equation. An equation, it has an equal sign. It has rational expressions in it. Rational expression means a fraction. Okay? So we're solving a rational equation. Remember ratio, okay, in the word rational you see the word ratio, and ratio just means fraction. So basically we're solving fractional expressions. Only rational expression implies that their x is in some of the fractions. Okay? Anyway, so we're solving rational equations. We have two steps. We make the bottoms the same and then we set the tops equal and solve it. Simple as that. Okay? So it's very similar to the last section. That's the beauty about this method I'm showing you now is that 
um, we've already figured out how to make the bottoms the same, okay, when we were adding and subtracting fractions. So this is just an extension of that same method. Now, one thing we have to be careful of is we're not allowed to divide by zero. Remember that? We can't divide by zero. Why not? Because it gives an error. We covered this in section 9.1. If you had 1 divided by 0, whoops, 1 divided by 0, that would give you an error in your calculator to divide by 0, okay? In other words, 1 cannot be divided by 0. Now, if x was equal to 0 in this fraction here, remember section 9.1, by the way? If you remember section 9.1, and you have uh, 1 over x, what would you plug in there for x so that the bottom is 0, right? Well, if you see, if x was actually 0 itself, if x was actually 0, right, then you would have 1 over 0, and this, and this fraction would be 1 over 0, wouldn't it? Okay. So because, of, because we have an x on the bottom in this equation, we have to stipulate, we have to say that x cannot be equal to 0. Okay. Because if x was 0, then we would have 1 over 0, which is an error. It's positive infinity or negative infinity. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. It's undefined, right? So that would give us an error, right? So we have to say that x can't be 0, whatever the answer is. Okay, so having found that out, we now need to actually solve the equation. So this is just something we say before we even begin when we have an x on the bottom of a fraction. Okay, so this is from section 9.1. We need to say that. So in any case, solving the equation, we have got to make the bottoms the same. Well, we've got to factorize the bottoms here, really, because uh, 15 is actually 5 times 3. Because if we were, you know, adding these fractions together, okay, 6 is uh, 3 times 2. If we were actually adding these fractions together, we would look for the lowest common denominator, right? And add the fractions. So in any case, we factorize the bottoms, and now we go ahead and try and make the bottoms the same. So I guess if I just started with these two guys, right? I've got to multiply this fella by an x on the bottom, and now this x is included here. And this one needs to be multiplied by, of course, 5 and 3, right? 5 times 3, right? Um, so obviously this one should be multiplied by x over x. So this makes sense, right? We've, we've made these bottoms the same. But we also need to look at this one. This fraction has to be included in the, in the, um, in the, in the work. So we've got x's here and here. So this guy needs an x, doesn't he? Okay. So now he has a, th he has a 3. He has an x, but he doesn't have the 5, so multiply him also by the 5, okay? Okay, so now he has the 3, the 5, and the x, but he has an extra 2 here. So we need to put a 2 onto these bottoms, don't we? So we need to put a 2 here, and need to put a 2 here. So multiply, multiply this guy by 2 over 2, multiply this guy by 2 over 2, okay? And now, all the bottoms are the same. So if all the bottoms are the same, Basically, what we have is, and I'll just write out the middle step again. You might like to skip this eventually, but this is, if I subtract these fractions, I have 2x minus 2 times 5 is 10, 10 times 3 is 30, 2x minus 30 over the same bottom, which is, of course, 2 times 5 times 3, that's 10 times 3, 30, we'll, we'll just say it's 30x, right? And that's equal to x times 5 is 5x all over, um, two, 3 times 2 is 6 times 5 is 30, we've got 30x here. So we get this thing, and now both bottoms are the same. And therefore, if this fraction is equal to this fraction, and their denominators are equal, surely the tops are equal. So the next line we can write down by logic is simply that the tops of the fractions have to be equal. Okay, And so just once again, like what we're doing is we're multiplying both sides by 30x over 1. We're doing the same operation to both sides. If I multiply both sides by 30x over 1, these guys cross cancel here and here. So, oh, that should be 1. Whoops, that should be 1. 1 here, sorry. Uh, okay, so that's basically what we're doing. And then we end up with 2x minus 30 equals 5x. But the point is, soon we'll, we'll get the logic that this bottom 
is the same as this, and these are just subtracted. Say they go under the same denominator, same bottom. This bottom is also the same, so therefore we can just write out, you know, 2x minus 30 equals 5x and just keep solving the problem like that. So hopefully we'll be able to skip this middle step soon. Anyway, um, solve this for x. We've got an x term on the left and an x term on the right. Couldn't we just subtract 2x? Would that be a good idea? Okay. Now you have negative 30 equals um, 5 minus 2 is 3, 3x. Uh, divide by 3, and we have negative 10 equals x. Okay, so x should be negative 10, I guess. Now if I check that, what I had was 1 over 15 minus 1 over x should equal 1 over 6. Okay, if x is negative 10, I plug negative 10 in for x, and this should work out. Notice that we have negative, negative, this is a negative fraction, that makes plus, so it's one fifteenth plus one tenth, and that should equal one sixth, and uh, we'll find that it does, and we could even um, uh, plug this in the calculator really quickly, because, um, clear, let's say one, oh, one fifteenth, see that, plus one over ten, one fifteenth plus one tenth for a center is that, and 1 over 6 is the same thing. So 1 15 plus 1 tenth is equal to 1 6. Of course, you can just add these fractions to practice and show that. So this is the correct answer. Okay. And by the way, our answer was not 0. If our answer was 0, we would have to discard it because we were not allowed to divide by 0. But it was negative 10, so that's, so that's fine. Okay. So... Um, but the point is, you still have to stipulate what x cannot be at the beginning. So, I mean, in that example, you, know, you still have to say that x can't be 0 to begin with. That's part of the problem. That'll be in the homework, right? Okay, so looking at this example 3, we've got 7 over x minus 3 over x equals 2 over x. Solve this equation. Well, um, first of all, we have to stipulate that whatever happens x cannot be equal to 0, because if x was 0, this would be, you know, 7 over 0, you'd be dividing by 0, and uh, that's undefined. And similarly, this one would be 3 over 0, this would be 2 over 0, sorry, this would be negative 3 over 0, this would be 2 over 0, so each of these would be undefined. But you only need one of them to be undefined to say that the whole thing wouldn't work, okay? So we have to first stipulate that x cannot be equal to 0, and now we can go ahead and try and solve the problem, okay? So, solving rational equations, once again, there are two steps. We, first of all, make bottoms the same, then we set the tops equal and solve, okay? So, first step is to try and make the bottoms the same on this fraction. Hmm, they are all the same, aren't they? So, all the bottoms are the same. Weird. They're all x. See that? So, if you want, the third step can... You know, the middle step is 7 minus 3. If you just subtract these fractions on the left, 7 minus 3 over x equals 2 over x. Okay? And now you have both bottoms are the same. You can now set the tops equal. Okay? And so then you would have simply 7 minus 3, this top equals 2. That's weird. 7 minus 3 is 4. I've got 4 equals 2. Now what do we do? Okay? We're solving it perfectly well, but we're solving it correctly. This is fine. We have made a mistake. But we've ended up with 4 equals 2. This is actually called a contradiction. We saw this in section uh, in er earlier when we were solving by substitution. Contradictions appeared. Okay, When you have a contradiction, that implies that there is no solution to this equation. In other words, there is no value you can ever plug in for x to make this equation true. Okay? I mean, if x, you could try, plug in, say, 10. 7 tenths minus 3 tenths equals 2 tenths. I don't think so. 7 tenths minus 3 tenths is 4 tenths. 4 tenths is not equal to 2 tenths. Right? So, when you plug 10 in, it doesn't work. And, in fact, no matter what number you plug in, this equation will never work. You could plug in, say, um... Uh, 28. 7 28 minus 3 28 equals 2 28. That gives me 4 28 equals 2 28. Once again, this is a contradiction. 
So no matter what I plug in, I cannot ever get both sides of the equation the same. So this equation is actually impossible to solve. That's why the answer is no solution. Sometimes you see this symbol, you know, the little circle with the line through it. That means nothing. Okay, so there's no solution. Okay, so example four then. We have negative one quarter equals one over four x minus one over x. Okay, and the first thing we've got to do is stipulate what x cannot be before we go. This is part of your homework. Whether it, it matters or not, you still have to say that because of this fraction, which is one over four times x, um, we, we're not allowed to divide by zero. So what could you plug in here so that this denominator gives zero? In other words, you remember we used to say, okay, 4x can't be zero. The bottom can't be zero. And if I divide by 4 on both sides, I guess x can't be zero. Because if x was zero, we would have 1 over 4 times zero, which of course is 1 over zero, and that's undefined. Okay? So because of this fraction, we have to say that x cannot be equal to zero. And because of this fraction, we have to say that x also cannot be equal to What would I, okay, 1 over x is the same as 1 over something, right? What do I plug into the parentheses? What number do I plug in here to make this fraction undefined? Well, just 0, because 1 over 0 is undefined. So because of this fraction, x can't be 0. So we have to say this as part of your homework at the beginning, okay? Sometimes it matters, usually it doesn't, okay? And But it, you, you can imagine when you take a test that, that when, it, when you take a test, that, that they'll give you a tricky one. So this is why we always have to pay attention in math, right? So the first step for solving rational equations is make the bottoms the same. Then we've got to set the tops equal and solve, okay? So to make these bottoms the same, we've got a 4 here, 4x, and x. Well, let's just focus on, say, these two fractions, 4x and this one. What can I plug in here so that these bottoms are the same? A 4, right? But I must multiply it by 4 over 4, just like I, just as if I was subtracting them, right? And what about this one? What do I plug in here so that all the bottoms are the same? Well, this guy's missing what? He's missing, missing the x, isn't he? So multiply him by x over x. And now all the bottoms are the same. And once again, really quickly, the middle step is I've got negative uh, 1x over 4x equals um, 1, minus, 1 minus 4 all over 4x. Uh, both bottoms are the same. See that? They're both 4x. And these two fractions are equal. Okay? This fraction equals this fraction. Both bottoms are the same. Therefore, the tops must also be equal. So I get negative 1x equals 1 minus 4, and I can solve it now. Okay? But, of course, we could have skipped this middle step and just said, look, all the bottoms are equal. Therefore, the tops have all the bottoms are the same. Therefore, we can set the tops equal and solve, right? Because these guys were going to we're going to make one fraction anyway, right? Because their bottoms are the same. Anyway, so we have negative one x equals one minus four. So that is negative one x equals negative three, and divide by negative one on both sides, and we have x equals positive three. Now we said that x can't be zero, so that's okay. X can be three. That's that'll be fine. And now we need to check our answer. Okay. So checking the answer, uh, the equation was negative 1 over 4 equals 1 over 4 times x minus 1 over x. If x is 3, does this make the equation true? Let's see. Negative 1 quarter equals 1 twelfth minus 1 third. Well, if I just multiply this guy by a 4 over 4, now I can uh, put these fractions together. That'll give me a 12th minus 4 twelfths. That'll give me negative 3 twelfths. And in lowest terms, 3 and 3 goes once, 3 and 12 goes four times. And this right-hand side becomes negative a quarter. So the, the left-hand side is negative one quarter. The right-hand side is negative a quarter. Both sides are equal. Draw a smiley face. We've got the correct answer. X is indeed 3. Okay? 3 solves the equation. 3 makes both sides the same. Right? So, for example, 5, we have these binomials on the denominators, x minus 2 and x plus 3. Now, before we do anything, we have to stipulate what x cannot be. We're not allowed to divide by 0. 
So my point is, this is negative 9 over something minus 2. What would you plug in there so that the bottom is 0? Well, you wouldn't plug 0 in there, for example. If you plug 0 in there, 0 minus 2 gives me negative 2. And you can divide by a negative 2, that's fine. That, that gives you an answer. But my point is, if you plug in, if x is positive 2, see, you'd have negative 9 over 2 minus 2, which is negative 9 over 0. And that, of course, is undefined. So for this fraction, x can't be positive 2, right? How about this guy? What can x not be here? This is a nice review of section 9.1, isn't it? If I plugged in a negative 3, you see, negative 3 plus 3 makes 0. So because of this fraction, x can't be negative 3. Does that make sense? Because look, you'd have negative 4 over negative 3 plus 3, which of course is negative 4 over 0, which of course is undefined. So because of this fraction, x can't be 2. Because of this fraction, x can't be negative 3. And then we go ahead and solve. So that's just an aside that you have to do that as part of your homework, and then you actually have to solve the equation. So we haven't solved it yet, but the trick is put parentheses around the bottoms to begin with, and now try and make the bottoms the same. Okay, so you just have two fractions now, this one and this one. Now if I may, if I stuck an x plus 3 here, okay, and here if I stuck a x minus 2, now both bottoms are equal, right? So I've got to multiply this top by x plus 3, and also I've got to multiply this top by x minus 2, okay? So this fraction equals this whole fraction, their denominators are the same, therefore their numerators must also be equal. And negative in line with the fraction bar is the same thing as having a negative on the 9. So this is just negative 9 times x plus 3 is equal to, and once again, this negative can be jumped up to be on the 4, so it's equal to negative 4 times x minus 2, and now we can solve it. We're back to math 60 skills, right? So multiplying negative 9, we get negative 9x minus 27 equals, multiply in this. So press pause on the calculator and solve this equation from here, and then check to see if you got the same answer as me. So press, oh, press pause on the video. Press pause on the video and check your answer. Sorry. So this gives me, I'm going to do it now. So multiply this in, I get negative 4x, and now negative 4 times negative 2 is plus 8. Okay. Now I'm going to add 9x to both sides for fun, and I get negative 27 equals 5x plus 8. Now I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides, and this gives me negative 35 equals 5x. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 5, and I get negative 7 equals x. Okay, so x should be negative 7, and we should definitely check that, just in case it's not. And the original equation was, um, originally we had negative 9 over x minus 2 is equal to negative, sorry, negative 4 over um, x plus 3. Okay, so the original equation was negative 9 over x minus 2 equals that. And I'll plug in negative 7 on both bottoms, okay? And on the left-hand side, I've got negative 9 over. Now, negative 7, take away 2, gives me negative 9, doesn't it? And here we have negative 4 over negative 7 plus 3 is a negative 4. Okay. So the left-hand side is negative over negative positive. 9 over 9 is 1, positive 1. The right-hand side, negative over negative positive. 4 over 4 is also 1. So both sides are equal, and so the answer is definitely x equals negative 7. Right? And we stipulate that x can't be 2 or negative 3. Well, it's not. It's negative 7. So, but just, just, just in case, I mean, if this actually did turn out to be, you know, x was negative 3, we would have to discard the answer. And we'll see that in later examples. Okay.